Welcome to Don't Worry About It with Meeks. Today, as for the inaugural podcast, we have a great friend of mine and a teammate. Uh, very intelligent guy, always great to talk with, Kofi Hope Gund. Welcome. How you doing, What's up, buddy? man? Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. It's great to have you, man. I've been excited to have this podcast going for a while. You know, it's always, it's been, it's been pretty isolated here in Wyoming. <laughs> I've been just finished my quarantine. So this is, this felt right. Well, this felt like a, a podcast was necessary. Just talking to the boys. Living the ranch life. <laughs> it's, it is solo. Yeah. But um, yeah. How you been, man? You've been, you've been good. I've been good. I've, found it tough to be like alone for long amounts of time during quarantine yeah. so now spending a little more time with friends from school has been nice um but other than that i'm safe i'm healthy same goes for my family can't complain about that especially during times like this absolutely but, yeah yeah no that's a big that was a big worry at first you know we I mean, now we've kind of accepted, like, we know we're going to be okay. I think if we get, just, we know what we need to do to right. be okay and to be stay safe at this point. But like, especially probably, I knew my family as well. Everyone's going to pretty much inside of the six of us, you know, we're all going to be okay. And we also know yeah. exactly what you need to do. And I think following that has been easy, which has actually made this, I was, I've been listening to some podcasts and a lot of, um, I don't know. Do you know who Duncan Trussell is? No. For any chance? He, so he's a friend of like Joe Rogan's and I've listened to a lot of Joe Rogan podcasts as well. Yeah. But he, he's a really cool guy. He has this podcast called Duncan Trussell family hour and he interviews these people and it's not very long. Some are like an hour, but he just, he gets into this. Um, oh my God. I lost my train of thought. Duncan Trussell. His, um, Oh my God. What was I saying? I Duncan, it. you were saying you, you watched some Joe Rogan and then he started watching Duncan Trussell and he gets into a, like a pattern or, or into. Yes. Yes. A pattern, but he also, Oh, he will really created the show. Sorry. That's what it was. He created the show called uh, midnight gospel. And he, uh, right. he, and I've been just watching that a lot, dude, I actually absolutely lost my train of thought. I, I was talking about staying safe and then all of a sudden jumped to somewhere else. But um damn. Okay. Well, oh my God. I am blanking. What was I talking about? Like can we run can trust them. before that? We were talking about everybody staying safe, like everybody in your family knowing like what's good, how to stay healthy, how to protect each other. And then yeah. you were saying you've gotten into podcasts. It might oh, have been like what well, motivated you to Oh, yeah. Okay. so yeah, it was watching the show. I watched the show Midnight Gospel and I kind of, and I heard of the guy, someone told me about the show and I, they said he's, he's a comedian and that's it. And I watched the show and each time you can hear it's a conversation. It's based on this guy who has been doing podcasts and he has conversations with people mm -hmm. and it's just each, each, inter, it's basically an interview in a sense, each person. And right. um, the concept of the show is that he is a, his name's Clancy. And he travels, he has this universe simulator and he basically travels to different universes, interviewing different people, every entities, I guess. And uh, just the conversations he has, they were very eye opening and definitely something like it was thought provoking. They just make you think about life and, and everything right. surrounding it just differently and your interactions with people. And a big thing was like with family, it was everything became much more up close the interactions and the being home like especially for you i mean how long were you in new york city for very long no i was actually quarantined up here where i am right now yeah, in, yeah, in kent but how was your family ever at all kent at once yeah so my sister had just moved to um brooklyn like right before covid kind of a couple months before covid hit the us so she stayed down there um, but me, my two brothers and my mom, all the four of us stayed up here in Kent for about two and a half to three months straight before any of us went back down to the city. So it was a, it was a while, but it was, I think thinking about family, I think one of the things that I took out of it that I now miss and didn't 
take I like appreciate enough in that in the moment of quarantine was dinners and having dinner with my family every night mm, yeah and and even then like yeah Tens is a great cook and that was part of it my little brother but yeah. Like being together for like that designated time every day for two and a half months, it, that's like a rare occurrence anywhere. And I think a lot of people that were fortunate enough to have that be the case during quarantine, maybe didn't appreciate it as much as they should have because that's what it felt like happened to me. Yeah, no, absolutely. That was a big, big change. I mean, after go, even going to college, you just come home, even for like a month, even. I mean, right. over some of those feel you you take those for granted because those summers don't don't you don't really get those summer breaks after college. So you get those, right. and then but during this quarantine, this time it was because we had started in I mean, like the whole um, scenario started in March. We were home basically, like you said, two to th- two and a half months, almost three months, and it was yeah. that's that but it was it was forced it was in a different time period and it was a time where we're supposed mm-hmm. to do, out in the world experiencing life we're yeah. in the best part of our lives and we just right. chilled you were chilling in kent and i was you know hanging out at home and just it was it was a weird time but it was definitely eye opening in that sense of family just family interactions really the, the like i the dinners mainly as well it was just being mm-hmm being home and a co- well-cooked dinner, especially like your, your brother. Right. Tends in. How old is he now, by the way? He is 16. Wow. Man, he was young. Yeah, so he's getting, he, he's like this, 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 I mean, he, he's going back to school now and he's, he's going to be in his junior year. And wow. So much, yeah. That's I mean, too. that's wild. That's also another thing to think about too, is <clears throat> the differences in how it affects our lives versus oh my God. like, a middle schooler or somebody in kindergarten like yeah we're in the peak years and yeah like missing college years and college months like fucking sucks and we'll never be able to replace it and and i still haven't gotten over that but i think the younger you go the more they won't realize how much they miss it but the more like important it could have been for them Oh, like, yeah. I think that no, it's I, sad we missed I, it, but I don't think it's as important for us. No, that's as important, you mean, as in, like, because it's early on in the ve- developmental stage? Yeah, and just in, ter- in terms of being, like, together with other kids and learning about life. Like, yeah, it's that's the case with us in college. We should be out in the world. We should yeah. be be with kids our age. We should be learning and growing and fucking up and all this stuff. But mm-hmm. I feel like the younger you go, the more is like, the same goes for them, and even though it like, and even then, it's it's that much more important. Yeah, definitely, definitely. They, I mean, basically, you spend, I mean, from, I guess the, I guess the later you go now, it's changed a lot because there's now this is, I can't even begin to explain how much of a massive culture shift this is, because yeah. every time you hung out, it was out in the parks. It was playing soccer. It was doing things backyards, going to people's backyards. I guess it's different in the city, but in the the cut, hanging out in, in each other's houses, watching movies. It's that human interaction was a huge part of it. But yeah, yeah. you were already starting to Facetime each other a lot. We would be too right. lazy to hang out. I mean, that's a big thing in college, I guess, because you live with each other. But it kind mm-hmm. of works its way down. I see my siblings. I have a younger brother, so Tommy. Uh, he's going, he goes to Millbury now. He's a freshman, plays football. Damn. And then, Traitor. Sophie, yeah, damn shame. Um, and then Sophie, she's going to be a junior, or she is a junior. At, uh, and then my youngest brother, Sebi, he's a sophomore. And it's just like seeing their interactions are so much different. They, they go to hang out in, the, in their own houses. They just be in different, they're in different houses, I'm saying. Like they stay on the Xbox or on FaceTime a lot of the time, just text yeah. each other. It's, it's just, I think there's more communication sometimes, but yeah. it's, um, but it's, it's, le- it's like limited. It's, in the, it's, it's, it's not as, it's not, it's, yes, not, I it's think physical. my mom, my mom, like, I think she's touched on like what you're saying and the loss of physical touch is really 
weird. It's, it's not like yeah, something we could have. It's, yeah. It's not necessarily but, weird. But it's I mean, never, it's never really going to go back. It's no, never, that's, like that's she said. Never. It's a shift. It's done. You hit space, the shift. You yeah. There's no back. Yeah. The time yeah. passed and that's the new thing. And we kind of saw this coming. Right. We saw this coming. I mean, we saw the technology, the more interconnected we got, the yeah. more like this is easy. I'm creating a podcast off of a Zoom connected to my Zoom yeah. channel. This is chill. I am fine right. right now. And this is a good conversation too. But it's this kind of, um, it's just a shift, really. You, you just can't close that door anymore. Yeah. And we've made yeah. it there. I, I mean, know. I, I could see a change. The aspect of also the aspect of the shift is like, it was what you said before, it was happening anyway because of the technological age we live in. Mm -hmm. But the shift was just an extreme acceleration, I think too. And given that it was so rapid and so like really abrupt and intense, like even if there's a point where COVID isn't at the front of anybody's minds, like it has been for the last six months, people are still going to stay in their homes. People are still going to FaceTime their friends. People are still going to yeah. prioritize ways of communication that are easier and that use electronics rather than going to a cookout, going to somebody's house, like yeah. all that. And it's not like those will never happen again, but there's, there, there are more aspects oh, of our past yeah. than, than our future. I think they've been, they've been brought down. They've changed. I mean, it's and not brought down that it's kind of like now with you've seen it, that it's another shift is movies. Movies, you don't see a lot of movies really coming out now. And those right. that are either have to be really good pushing it. Like I haven't, right. yeah. And, and, or they're just not that good. And they're entertaining typically. They're typically yeah. quality, like entertaining in that sense, but very expensive now. They're very expensive. TV shows obviously are very expensive. They pour tons of money, but it's because they're episodes and they, it's more, you can keep watching and you can keep, you can yeah. binge them. Yeah. And that's why, and you can see like, Netflix is shot up, Amazon Prime Video, Hulu, yeah. HBO, everything, everything um, has just been, you see it shoot up. Like the quality of shows that are out there now, it's amazing. Yeah. And it's, yeah. you just see it. That's a big culture shift too. No, yeah, like, from movies to shows. And now that there are movie theaters, there's no movie, there's not a movie yeah. theater, 160 miles from me. Jesus. That's the closest one. <laughs> Because the other Bro, in the northeast, like near me, there's probably zero. Yeah, there's probably yeah. none. It, it's it sucks. I, that's why I go to movies. I go to watch movies in the movie theater. Right. It's just yeah. that that experience is, is why the intensity, the speaker system, and just the visual. Or it's making crazy. a plan and texting friends. Like yes, even I that, remember seeing. Oh. I remember seeing. The, I don't. I don't know why this is at the front of my memory for movie theaters, but I remember seeing Dunkirk. At, at Battery Park with like five of my friends and Rio. And I remember it just being so intense and I remember enjoying myself so much. And now thinking about it, like that in, the industry is not dead and I might go to a movie theater again in a couple of years, but the fact that it's lost right now and people might never, there's, there are people out there that might never go to a movie theater again. Like that's just the reality. And yeah, it's a sad reality, but it's like, it kind of is what it that's is. That's a shift, though. That's just another shift yeah. in the culture, really. I mean, right. it's because, like, when you think about, like, anything happening, it's not – sometimes we say it's for the worse or for the better, but it's just a shift. We develop. The developments aren't necessarily good or bad. They just happen. There's just – we adapt. Mm -hmm. And this situation, we said – I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense that we're yeah. talking to people on the phone and not – not hanging out with them as much because obviously there's something going on. So we just right. exponentially used it so much more and it just, it changed yeah. a lot. I mean, but you okay. see that in the, you Sorry. see that in the, in, in all facets of entertainment, including movies, TV shows, sports, like anything like along those lines, there's, and another thing I thought about is I've never actually been to a music festival. And I was planning on going to one like re like relatively soon this in junior year. I was talking mm -hmm. to my brother who the same goes for him. And I can't see anybody live now in like what three years? Like that's another huge aspect. Live music. Live music, music is incredible. Is fun. I used to go to a lot of concerts in high school. 
and that's yeah i've been to concerts so never a music fun. festival and it's just i don't know it's it's that it's being with the people it's being with people yeah. around you and being yeah. with this person with his music yeah. enjoying his music like he enjoys his music and yeah that's great but now Travis Scott has concerts on Fortnite and that I mean, apparently that was lit. I don't know. I don't watch, but I heard about it because I have siblings, but that um I mean, yeah, man. That's a change. It's, that's like a big thing. It's just things going away. It's just a weird. But here, I mean, living out in Wyoming, Wyoming. the big thing here is way different. It's it's all human and I, we're always talking. There's no really concern. Yeah. I, I did a two week quarantine and like it was, I mean, I just hung out here a lot. I got to go into town once, just I had to go buy a lot of things, but even there. How they, far are you from Casper? Like downtown Casper. Okay. 30 minutes. So, and it's a beautiful ride. It's a left, a right, and then it's a straight for 18 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm chilling. It is amazing. You go through the valley and there's those mountains Damn. and stuff, and it's just. I've never, Damn. this is insane. So everywhere you stand outside, everywhere you look, you just look 180 degrees or 360 degrees, never looking yeah. up or down, you stay, you will see the sky everywhere. The sky is half right. of the frame everywhere. And you right. look right. just looking at the sky, it's insane. There's no halt yeah. tall stuff. The mountains are very small and it's not the Rockies. So we're, yeah. and cause we're on the east side of Wyoming and, um, and the Rockies and like Yellowstone is all in the West, Jackson, yeah. all that stuff. Um, and so it's like not. How, how are the stars? <sighs> <laughs> Have you ever seen any painting? It's just that. It's insane. Yeah. It's the, the stars the, out West. They're gorgeous. Oh my God. It's gorgeous. It's, it's so many stars. You can't stay focused. Yeah. I usually will sometimes look at one star and what you'll see is that more stars will light up around it. It was, they were already mm. there. They were already there. Yeah. So you already saw them. You were so And no light pollution there. too. Living yeah. in New York, like, I'm just so used to light pollution. Yeah. You don't see shit. I'm being up here, like, there have been some pretty, like, you just beautiful look, nights up in Cat. up for 20 minutes, the same general area, and you'll just see shooting stars. It yeah. is the most calming. It's like, now I just accept, it's just so nice. And I, my, <laughs> I don't have blinds in my bedroom. So I can look and the window's higher up than the bed. So I'll lie down and I'll be able to see the stars at night. And it's just, you see them so yeah. clearly, even through the window. But um, yeah, listen, I listen to a lot of music now. You? I'm just hanging a lot. Of worse. But I mean, I, I, I wish I could be a little more adventurous but with my artists. I have like my couple artists that I just listen to a lot and i and then i find new songs every now and then like on spotify use my discover every once in a while and certain artists radios but i mean yeah music's been vital for me in quarantine like there's so many different times where it's just i got a i got a a, a dj mixing board and i've been messing with that for a couple months which is pretty fun those are fun but yeah music music is it's been a big part because of the fact that we can't have any human interaction or any be with any friends like it's i've come to notice it so i've i only listen really now because i i spend a lot of my days alone so i'll wear headphones a lot or i'll have a speaker with me if i'm walking around and stuff right so i've been listening to a lot of music as well and podcasts and those two and i've noticed it because i guess i'm not alone a lot like i said it's just it's it's more than the music itself it's the, it's just a space filler and it just fills the noise for you. You know, it, it, uh, I don't know. It just makes that, it feels like you're, I don't know how to explain it. It's just a different, instead of having to talk to someone, you're not really, you're just listening, you know, and it feels like you're part right. of it. And it's like, cause someone's, you're listening to the music or you're listening to a podcast and you're just listening to it and you're making sense of it all. And that's just the new thing, I guess, make sense of mm other things outside of conversation outside of text messages and email. I mean, that's, yeah, it's just, uh, but music a lot. I mean, what do you listen to mostly? I think during quarantine, or not even during quarantine, like these are just my favorite artists, but 
Anderson Pack pretty much all the time. Um, Burner Boy pretty much all the time. For the artists who have dropped stuff that I've enjoyed during quarantine, I enjoyed the weekend stuff that he dropped. Lil Uzi dropped his stuff early when we were at school together. And I remember I started listening to it then and then still continue to during during the quarantine. Um, recently, I went to the vineyard with my sister mm -hmm. and two of her friends and the rest of my family. And she's a huge Frank Ocean fan. And I kind of got back into him recently a little. And he's he is... I'm convinced like one of the most talented artists on the planet. He's yeah. just, his music is fucking incredible. Right. And she also likes Lana Del Rey. Lana, I, 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 I'm not like completely on the ups about her, but her music is, she's oh. also like extremely talented. Oh yeah, absolutely. But that's, great. but that's kind of a couple that have been at the top of my mind of recent time. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah, I, I, I listen to a good amount of, like older 70s 80s like 60s 70s 80s like soul and like old kind of r&b jazzy kind of stuff yeah. and yeah I've heard that, that stuff. stuff for me is is pretty timeless Absolutely. like temptations like all that kind of like aretha franklin oh. and fitzgerald like any of that like those jazz are so good that's yeah. always like my fallback i feel and yeah, wow. That's good. You have a fallback. You have like your artists. You have people. You yeah. Have, and then there's like the the support system. I just click right. a, click shuffle, and I you know it'll be good kind of thing. That kind of right. stuff. Right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. You have a broad broad range of time in music: 60s, 70s, 80s, and then today. Oh yeah. I mean, also, I I would love like car rides with my moms when I was younger because they would always play like their oldie music and that's yeah, kind of where you yeah, love it always fun yeah dude i've listened to so my friend alan he got me into uh tame impala pretty early on this summer um, oh yeah and man oh man that, that's great artist that guy he is sick he sent me a bunch of videos like just interviews and stuff with him about the guy and he's such a such a cool guy it's just like the most genuine and fluid music. The guy puts so much time and energy into it. You can tell right. and hear and the quality of the music is so good. And you can't argue with like a bat. The, I've never listened to every single song he's played and had one where I, and had like zero that I disliked. There it was yeah. absolutely zero that I disliked. It was- I remember telling Kyle one time that like, and, and like our silly ass little language, like I would tell him Tame and Paula doesn't, doesn't, it's not even, the, Tame and Paula isn't a vibe. Tame and Paula creates vibes. Like, it's like, they're, yeah. like the music, he is the vibe. that kind of music is, I mean, obviously it's vibe, but oh, he, he creates vibe. vibes. Yeah, he like vibe. like that, that music, that kind of music is. You hear it, you hear it and it's so many different things. It's so much different music at once. It's a different, right. it's one right. multiple vibe. It's not simply one of rock. It's one of, it's one of the more right. like EDM in a sense. And there's some more, right. um, there's some quicker beats, there's some slower beats and you got stuff that's, um, you know, very personal. And then it gets farther on and just talking about stuff. And it seems about always an interaction with someone. You always hear you. Right and like talking about me and it's always talking to someone in a sense he's always interacting with someone and i like that about it because it's not it never gets boring it's like a podcast but just talking to a person on a through music and he has this interact he's like every single one is directed at something someone it's away from him it's never talking about himself i mean he does sometimes mm. it's in reference talking back to this person and that's like you always, you can always settle with just listening to the music and I could fall back on any song like that. And, but I've really gotten into what, like I started researching a bit more about it and like the Beatles really started out of this and a few, and a bunch of other great artists. I can't remember the top of my head right now, but this was like psychedelic rock in the, I mean, I guess in the seventies really it started there and it just, it was all in the UK and then it just sprung out of there. And almost mm. like over the, over the next um 
like 50 years, I guess, to now, really. It's gotten everywhere. You see it in Australia, you got it in, uh, in all over the US, you got it up in Canada, and you got it all, all over Europe as well. It's just, it's such a well, it's such a fluid <laughs> genre sense. Genre. Block, but it, it's got the more, you know. Also, I feel like you get a lot of sounds. You get like yeah. what you were saying. You get a lot of different sound. instrument sounds and the variability there combined with like the sturdiness and the ever presence of rock all over the planet oh my God, is like yeah. kind of is absolutely that i mean that just that alone like and you can emphasize the different sounds and they sound totally differently on their own but they yeah they're so they all go together as well they may be yeah. different but they still stay together and it's that despite all the the broad variability there's still a a fluid vibe you feel with that music. Mm. And a big mm. thing is that the Tame Impala was imposing, I guess, in a sense, is that it's just, it's just a good vibe. He just wants to give you what he feels and that, and make right. you feel like he, you're, you're with him almost in a sense. It's, he's putting it, mm. it's just that music, but like that kind of music as well, it's just pretty, it's pretty genuine as well. It's always like, just with psychedelic rock, it's just, it's that you feeling vibe and, you feel it yeah. in music a lot of the time because it's a lot about the music and the voice interacting with the music. It's not necessarily the voice alone. And then with the, the music building it, they build together and they go together. Right, that, right, like, right. Whoa, right. voice. And there's, there's a, I don't know, it just works. It's a balance. It's a great balance. Right. You'll hear with like right. rock, I mean, with rap nowadays, it's you're kind of dividing the two you got the voice and then the beat going on behind so you can distinguish very easily but sometimes you'll have that interaction where they kind of sometimes the guitar sound hits the exact same as the voice and then they it kind of goes together and you can't really tell and it's not right. but you're not worried but when you're but that's more yeah and that's what i'm saying that's more of a fe that's what you're saying it's more of a feeling feel that's, that's that's more of a um, like that's pure like emotion when when yeah. They combine and, and hit a spot together. Also, I know this isn't psychedelic rock, but I felt like we couldn't no, I'm all continue the, the music I'm conversation absolutely. without uh, uh, talking about pop, I'm pop and smoke. Saying. And the posthumous album was fucking it, incredible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they, what, what was what was like crazy about it was like this was he was. He was literally like 20 years old when he died. He's like 20. Like this, this is a child and he was, <laughs> this is so all the music that party. came out. Yes. Right. All the music that came out in the posthumous album was stuff he had worked on and stuff he had thought about creating like and was, started to create. Yeah. And it was incredible. And then when his birthday rolled around in July, the, um, the bonus the extra bonus tracks came out and they were also like just as good. Really? And for, for like within quarantine, I, there wasn't a single artist. I think I listened to more in like the months of July and August than pop. Mm -hmm. And that was also when I like returned home, I started to see a couple friends from high school, spending a lot of time with my brother and we yeah. were just listening to a lot of pop song. And then what you're saying about rap is also true. There's that relationship between the sample, like the beat and the rapper, but but pop, like oh he, he I like built his, a lot of his his a lot of his identification, depth. yeah, depth. off of like depth. off of Fifty Cent too, and so like he you his sound was recognized. It wasn't some. It's not like it's not like he was blazing a path like no, that was particularly his own, he, but he, he did built, it so well. He built on yeah, he well, built yeah, on it absolutely. right. A big thing of music you'll see in a rap also because it's a it the, I don't even know how to explain it really but you just see so many variations but then there's also a lot of overlap that's the big thing that's yeah. what I was trying to say really and so um, you'll see guys like Pop Smoke building on older rappers there's a lot of sounds right. trying, I can't even think of any right now but you see some overlap in older rappers voices or not even older rappers, but just similar rappers. You see, sometimes you mix them two together and that that overlap, I think is just building off each other because it's the nearest yeah. sound. And 
it's not the same. But that's why older folks voice. older rap trailblazers. Absolutely. Older rap trailblazers are like they're you, th- you can think of them as pillars because exactly. every rapper nowadays ha- listened to a rapper when they were younger and that's where they got yeah. maybe not their their significant their sound alone because they're I love Anderson yeah. Pack a lot because he has his own genre basically in my book like he has his own genre like he he combines a lot of R&B a lot of like soft rock and instruments and and then you're saying pieces of rap. rap or no no this is anderson pack oh anderson pack but, oh, i miss i miss what you said okay yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah no definitely he's a big instrumentalist guy he's into the he's into yeah. his music like that and he, yeah i i i love when you play him i don't really i i have some of his music but i don't really listen like you do dude's fire that guy is he's, he's, he's so good. fucking like this is my so that's kind of my backbone yeah, Man, that I got. Yeah, it's a, it's a vibe. And he he just dropped a recent song with Rick Ross that I enjoy. It was mm-hmm. pretty good. I haven't listened because I, I I really listened through you, but I guess I'll, I'll try and listen to him more for sure. Because he every time I've listened, I've enjoyed. So I I see no reason why not. Yeah. Fire. But AP, he's just he's just, he's a specific kind oh, of very artist, specific. I I remember listening to stuff and not not never not liking it, but necessarily just un, like getting a feel of for the vibe really. Because it's a different right. music, really. And you got to get you got to get in that. You can't really just go, oh, I love this all the time. I it's agree. Like, it's different. I agree. Yeah. yeah. But that's asking. kind of back, goes, going back to what you're saying about, like, the, the, the rock and the psychedelic rock stuff. Yeah. That's, like, artists like Anderson Pack, like, they need a vibe for them to, for their music to be enjoyed. I don't think that's the case with like certain psychedelics rap. Like Tame Impala, I think fits in anyway. so many different situations, anytime, it's, anywhere. It's not, yeah, it doesn't subscribe. It's not. It doesn't. Right. Wave. Right. Subscribe yeah. is a good word. It fills the waves. It fills in the right. blanks. It's literally. I've never. I've never felt it where I can just play it at any moment, really, where I'm just comfortable and it doesn't feel wrong. It doesn't feel like too chill or too hype or, you know too much feel or not enough or just nonsense like anything really it just blowing music out mm. it just works you can always yeah. enjoy it i agree you don't have to listen to the lyrics you can listen to the lyrics they're always pretty interesting you can listen to the voice you can listen to the drums you can listen to the guitar you can focus on the synthesizer it's just it's all over the place and it just hits yeah. you well there's also more variation i'm not getting the coverage there but like instruments any instrument you have really and they just, they get the sound right. They get it different. There's more flow to it, at least. But I think I've noticed, actually, I was going to say, there's been a big change. I've seen at least, sl- not big, that's it, man. Let me run that back. There's been, I've noticed, a change in the instruments, at least, or the sound of some rappers and even just a lot of musicians and artists today using more instruments again so you'll hear not necessarily the instrument mm. themselves but like the sound of the instrument a lot of guitar again rap is really attacking guitar i love it i love guitar when they like come in like that high right they um and you'll see some more like snare like just random real instruments but they'll use like the synthesizer use of it instead of like playing right. the actual instrument like with their hands you just hear it a lot more and do you like it's, I've started to notice that change, but do you think that might happen? I don't know. I mean, I think also artists have a lot of time, you know, and yeah. right now, and maybe this trend was happening before quarantine, but I think right now, like, artists who are serious about music and serious about putting out, like, really great sound understand that a part of that is understanding and being good Self. at working with instruments and that's the right. sounds that they make, because that's, yeah. at the end of the day, the foundations. But a big thing, like good music. That's true. No, I agree. I agree absolutely. But a big thing you'll see. Who? Who do you think? Kyle. (laughs) Goody man. Papa Kelly's here. What's up, man? I can't hear you. Can't hear hear anything. I got you. One sec. Uh, thank you for having me on, Nico. Yeah, what's up, Kyle? You what's doing, you, 
What's going on? How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. So we're talking, we're we're talking, talking about the music about. industry, yeah. but I I feel as though there's not enough heart going into today's music. So you see a lot of artists, they, it's, it's more of a money. Obviously, people won't make careers off it, but they're not. It's not like it used to be where your song is a part of you because it's almost there. Most songs are telling stories in some way. I think it another. depends on the artist, though. We're talking about Tame Impala. Yeah. And yeah, Tame Impala is not. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't generalize that. I would say that it exists. Absolutely. There are people that just decide, they call them sellouts and they decide that that's the money is the value over or they just don't, they dissociate from the song. So that might be, you might see that in music, but I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's the biggest, it's the biggest role now again. I think people mm -hmm. signing to deals doesn't necessarily mean they're selling themselves out. You need to make money. And it's, it's much more difficult to create your own album and sign yourself and pay stuff for yourself when you come out of very just bad situations and you make it like not everyone has all the money in the world just to be able to spend on studio time. And, you know, I don't know what else goes into making music, you know, but you have to buy instruments and buy technology and all that stuff and pay for that kind of things. So I guess you know, you know, money is key. I don't think it's the biggest component is what I'd say. I, I, I agree with that. But you do have, like, you were even saying, like, Kevin Parker, like, he cares about the shit he puts out, you know? Yeah, like, absolutely. There, there aren't, there's not a lot of music Tim and Paula drops that's like, eh, he didn't give a shit, you know? And, and that's not the case with every artist, but, and I could see that trend, like, being a factor in today's kind of modern SoundCloud game and, like, all that. But yeah. then again, as you said, it's that's definitely a factor and it's an important key because at the end of the day you're not going to make music just not to make any money yeah. but it's not it's not i i mean a big thing also i'd say actually that kyle maybe is pointing out is that rap also mentions money like a lot um right. you'll see it in rock actually a lot now too but like you'll see the mention of money that may not necessarily mean to subscribe to it they may just be following you know the the leads that people set that talk about money. They talk about getting rich or die trying 50 cent hitting that. That was way right. before now. And people, you hear that now, just cause they're talking about money may not mean that it matters the most. They'd be flexing it and whatnot. It's no use if you're not using it. They like having it go right ahead. That's not like, I think, I think the fact that that, and it's such a small faction too of those people that are like flexing all their money all the time. And, you know, talking about the money. I think it's, I think they probably not like that day to day. If you're just talking with them, they're not going to keep telling you how much money they got and how much money they have as their only conversation point, unless they're that boring. I just can't see that happening. Looking back, thinking back to like what we were saying before in the pillars of certain rap genre, like genres, like mm -hmm. rap pillars, like most of those guys did talk about money because it was how they made their money. Their music oh, was yeah. how they made it. Yeah, absolutely. This is the case with artists, but that's why you might see like modern day rappers and, and hip hop artists talking about money a lot now as well, because when they like heard rap and hip hop when they were younger, that was what was mentioned. That's, yeah. That was a big part of the pillars in that given genre. Yeah. Obviously it's different. The, it's like a job. Each song is like a job description. They just tell you how much money they make. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that definitely makes sense. That it would be, it would be. Um, I mean, the focus of money. But Kyle, what do you listen to mainly? Uh, so I'd say top five: Kid Cudi, Frank Ocean, Kanye, Travis. Uh, I'm not sure who I put in the face. Kanye is a hot, hot fucking take. I'm able to represent artists from human, but like Kanye is a pretty. Kanye is pretty good. I, I like his music. I've never not, I've never been like, no. Is one of the like, best rap of all time. Like, who? 
my beautiful dark twisted fantasy is one of the best rap albums of all time i'm not disagreeing i think his he has one of the best album series of albums ever i mean i love pretty much i mean, enjoyed pretty much all of his music when i listened to it so i understand just a wild guy some people don't like him solely outside of his music that's a big thing now people are just making but I don't have time for people who are going to say, like, the person makes me hate his music. No, I don't, dude, I, I don't get that. It's like, it's like, life, if you're allowing Kanye as a person to stop you from I appreciating know, I know. how fucking good of an artist he was before yeah. all this bullshit, you know? I know. I, dude, I, I've just been saying, I've been hearing it so much, and it, I agree with you, man. It just, but, like, I don't even, like, I, I guess I was going to play the devil's advocate, but then couldn't because I was going to say, why does anyone do that? Why do you associate their music with them as a person when even if it's absolutely fire, a quality music, it's just soulful. Like as Kanye goes, such good music. He's like, like, uh, yeah. that he has music. It's, it's, it's just such good quality and the producing quality and the music that he also makes for other people. Yeah. Fire. And yeah. So I can't and, disagree with Kyle on that, but I also don't think he's, I don't think he's my top five. But uh, Could I ask you a question? So sure. I was watching a YouTube video, Kevin Durant on some talk show, and they, one of the uh, talk show hosts goes, I think what makes you one of the greatest, maybe players ever, but like top player in the NBA is that you're a student of the game. Do you think? That concept applies for musicians. Do you think Kanye is a student of Not the game more. of music where he just he keeps improving, but he also changes, he adapts. Like he's going, That's, he's listening to every type of music and how he can implement it. That's what makes you, do you think that is the same in music that that makes you better? Yeah, it does. But I, I, I think that, I mean, yeah. it's the same thing in like thought, the pillars of thought. And like Kofi said, the pillars of music. There's a student because there's a school because there has been music that exists before. The fact that there's history of anything really makes it that there's a school of it because there's different ways of thinking and understanding and uh, motion and just existence and the flow of everything is, it's different, it changes. And so they use the old stuff to make the new stuff. And so I think, yeah, absolutely, Kanye, I mean, was a student. I don't know now. I think he might be creating. But early on, <laughs> I, early on, you see his growth too, from the skits through like late mm -hmm. registration, through graduation, through beautiful Dark twisted. Like that's. I think when I think of Kanye, I, 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 yeah, there have been later albums that are decent after beautiful Dark twisted, but I think everything before that to beautiful Dark twisted is just. You could see that growth in what Kyle is saying. Because he also improves on what he was also good at in his that, earlier albums. That's, that's using the pillars. He's literally, he's just doing it. I mean, there's, there's always, I guess, when you think about his music developing, like I said earlier, Kofi, that development isn't always for the best or the worst. It's just an adaptation. And every, every artist adapts, obviously, because they, they choose to and they follow with the times. But the way they adapt is different. It's gonna change. And I think, I think technically every artist and every, everything that anyone does is a student of, the, of that subject. And so I, again, I, like, uh, like Kofi said, and I think Kanye is um, definitely building on those, on himself and he's adapted in his way. And I think he's adapted probably one of the best ways. I don't think, that makes him more or less of a student, if that's like kind of the idea. Um, but what would you what would you standardize as a student then, Kyle? Were you saying as in the music and the art and the voice, or is it solely focused on the lyrics? Is it the is it the flow of the beat? Like what what are you thinking? So what are they studying as? Because I I feel every musician has to be a student. There's no Kanye even at his top is still a student. Right. Are you saying what what are they looking at in the songs? Well what are you saying as in like what con what's beyond student basically? Is there levels to this? Are you saying as like master or student or is there like the the uh, is he always like an apprentice 
and is he just always and then once he retires maybe he's not or is it like is he just because he studies this the music he listened to other music so he's added it to his music is he simply a student are you saying because then so, technically everyone's a student because we always listen to music so we always kind of mold it to what our favorite sound is we may not have an exact genre but we know the vibe it makes us feel and that right. best vibe and so that's not that's technically being a student you're still learning about the music um, yeah. so i don't know what are you what are your thoughts on that I think that's a really good point that we're all students of music. It affects us our own way. We interpret it different ways. But in terms of musicians, I'm just trying to say like, during their career, they're always going to be students. And then after, like they're not releasing songs anymore. Maybe they're doing it for fun because that was what they did their whole life. But I feel like just if you want to be a successful artist, musician, you have to be a student. Yeah, I mean, you have to, you, you start by playing someone else's music. You don't just start writing your own music from the start. So like you play an instrument, you're going to play someone else's own music. So yeah, you definitely mold that sound. Kofi, what were you going to say? No, 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 no. I was, I was kind of, no, I was, I was going to just continue talking about how we all, we all have to listen to music to understand not only our own vibe, but the vibe of the person we're listening to. Yeah. I love the best part about listening to music is listen, showing your favorite music to someone else. And then right. the best part is when they love it, when they enjoy it, like listening to music with you guys is chill. I love it. I love just hanging out. We're just listening to music and it's nothing matters. Nothing well, matters. That goes, both ways, though. that goes both ways because it's also beautiful when somebody so shows you a song, an artist oh, that you know. <laughs> fucking love it there's no yes. better feeling i've never I found oh. listening to my li listening to given song li listening to given artists and from that learning more about why did i like it can i go more into this genre should i look more into this artist and yeah. that that is more exploration into the world of music that one can enjoy that's a big thing i mean listening like you said the the leading to the exploration you um i mean Every time I've listened to music sometimes with you guys, you guys play music that I maybe have never heard. We'll like Shazam it and then just like go through the artist's music after that and listen to more stuff. It just, I just do that now. I'll listen to an album from um, just some artist that I like because I like the song just, and then have a go, see what happens. Maybe I like it, maybe not. And then I add a few songs here and there. And it's just like that expands our sound in a way. Obviously, we're not the one reproducing the music, but I think when we're together and when people are together and they're enjoying music that they most like best, I guess, is mutually enjoy, that is just, that is probably some, that is something that you can't do over FaceTime or over Zoom or over Xbox Live or, any, or um, just any like, where you're not physically there. It's when you're together, you're enjoying that. It's, it's, it's like you're in sync in a sense because you're all enjoying the same music. So you're hearing the same, your sensory, same wavelength. And it's something when, it, when it's mutual, it's just, it's a, it's a human connection, man. It's just great. It's, I can't even, it's inexplicable, but yeah. But going to what we were talking about before, like that's another thing that's, that's clearly missed that no because yeah. that kind of physical connection is not like fit, like something that would pop up off the top of anybody's heads right now where we say like we miss being with each other and miss being together but that's that's another kind of connection that's dependent on being present and being in the same room as somebody mm -hmm. being in the same place not just facetiming chat like yeah. all that Dude, a big part of it is that like your conscience is with you. Your conscience doesn't kind of float somewhere else to someone else's house. Your conscience is with you. It's part of your physical body. People have the there are theories, you know, that surrounding the outside. If you, once you die, you like, you go to the internal everything. But now when we're alive, I think that being part, I think part of being physically together is the conscious part of hanging out with that person and being with that person yeah. and being with those people, obviously. And it's, it's 
you just you can see it on their faces and the way they move, the way they feel. It's it yeah. affects you the same way it affects them in that sense because you see the way it makes them feel, someone else, whoever it is, and they may be a great friend, even someone you don't really hang out with, but you might be see, seeing, and they just put on a song, and you're like, "Wow, this guy." This guy gets music and then you start talking to him about the music and you can indulge the music and when it hits you and you're like, this guy has the same more than I thought. You just learn about someone. You can talk oh, to yeah. him. It's just, it's a vibe creator. It you're is- putting me in my bag though, because it's tough not, <laughs> it's tough not being with, with, with different people listening to different music. I know. The, I, like, I like a bit, what I like about being able, how, being able to hang out with people also is that you'll listen to some of their music so much. Like for example, you'll either listen to the same stuff so much so you know what you're getting with Gabe or yeah. I'm with you. And I guess now like that I know, I know now, but I guess before, I mean, uh, I wouldn't know your entire music library. I mean, like you told me a generalization, but like I didn't know your entire music library. So you play your music and it would always be whatever, it would be, I knew kind of the sound, but I wouldn't hear enough. So sometimes you, give me something yeah. random that I hadn't heard before. And it was like, damn, yeah. you're, you're expanding in your, in your, in your field of just uh, sound, really your enjoyment. And so mm. I like when I like that also, I like that there's either the variability with some people, they'll play so many different vibes across so many different genres. And then there's like right. people who, who uh, <clears throat> will come back to the same music and you just know it's always good vibes. Like that was a big thing with Gabe. I always enjoyed the same. He played like the same music all the it's time. Like, for Gabe, it's like for Gabe. It's like it's like Loyal Connor, Tom Mish, and Parcels. Yeah, Parcels. It's a lot of that. Those three. But yeah. I, I yep. actually really enjoyed Parcels. Like I listen to them not I as much as I do. Yeah, yeah. I actually I didn't really like realize what who, what they were all about. And I, I, yeah. I like it's them. like they so they have some good songs like, I really enjoy it. But that, yeah. but see, even then, like the music is more like uh, kind of a positive feeling. Like yeah, it's a positive. It's a positive vibe. It's jumpy. Right. You're, right. you're kind of in a set vibe. Right, it's, right. It's, but that's but that's but that's kind of what I'm saying. It's like the fact that we can both define and see that and characterize it means like that's it doesn't hold it back per se, but. No, but it's it, better in a certain situation than it would be in another. Exactly. It just, it fits in different scenarios. There's different slots. It fills one or the other. Yeah. It doesn't fill all of them. Some, some music isn't restricted to that. And it's amazing. That's probably personally, my favorite music is the music that I can play anytime without a worry. And I, it always makes me feel the way I feel. I want to feel in that moment. It doesn't really like hmm. require, you know, one to go off. But then there's music, obviously, that does that, and I love that too because you you really press yeah. into that, and it gets you going, or chills you out, or gets you an upbeat, vibe, whatever it is, mm. it, gets, it hits right, and that that series of wavelengths hitting you, man, in the right in the right energy, and it's great. It's just it's something different. But I, mean, I think that's what what draws me to like older style, like what I was telling you before, like '60s through '80s, like rhythm and blues and jazz and 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 soul like and like and even i mean because like my family and the people i've known like my good friends from high school know me like and know that kind of music you know i love that music so much that when i when they give me like certain kinds of recommendations of songs i don't know that fit those kinds of genres and i enjoy it and they see i enjoy it like that's kind of what you were saying before that's an like an almost irreplaceable feeling because you know that person knew something about you knew something about the way you relate to music and gave you a, a suggestion that, oh, that you d- then enjoy. There's this song I've been listening to recently by The Dip called Atlas, and it's, it's fucking incredible. And, I, and it's, <laughs> that's great. And that's like kind of a nice culmination of that kind of genre slash vibe that my family knows I love. And I, on, my, on my Spotify, I have like a playlist and like we always we always used to, we listen to a lot during like dinner kind of times and stuff like that yeah. and it's all like that that certain area okay and i think i mean i would say like that's kind of just my best or my my favorite 
kind of yeah. genre slash field yeah, field. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's sick. I I can't. I love when somebody. You have to you have to listen to that song and report back to. Definitely me. gonna listen to that song, by the way, and that playlist that you talk about. If it, is it public? I'll send it to you. I, I, I gotta I gotta listen to this, the playlist too. Um, but uh, yeah, for sure. I've always been interested in soul. I've liked that kind of music always because it's soulful. Um, but it, I've always liked that like that soulful music. It's just a good energy. It's just good vibes. Yeah. But I've never been listen to the type that you mentioned so definitely gonna listen to that stuff like motown ish yeah. that kind of thing i've definitely heard it i just don't, haven't like actively listened you know yeah that's a genre well i, I that's a tough thing about saying i listen to all music there's a, right. lot, of music. There's there's a lot of music there's a lot of fucking music anybody who says they listen to all music doesn't listen to all music well, it's impossible. i listen to all the genres i've heard all the genres and i enjoy i'll say actually no you can't even really say that I've heard all the genres and I, I can enjoy all the genres. That's something you can say. No one really wants to say that. So they just say, I've heard them all. Or, I listen to them all. But I think it's more like they're accepting. They're just I, tolerant in a sense. They're, they enjoy it. It's, it's, it's just active seeking or whatever, but it's that music. I think your, but that genre that you act like said, that's a new one for me. That's a catalog right there. That's a, adding to the to the slot that's great so i'm definitely gonna listen to that. i love I, that's what i love that someone listening talking to people and figuring out new things and invited to listen to new music so oh yeah yeah um yeah damn we just indulged in some good music talk for a while there oh, we um, we went for a minute bro yeah man so you got on time or how, how you get we can keep going if you want i'm i'm chilling so uh, yeah, I think I might, might, might jet, but this, this was a lot of fun, bro. Oh, Thank good. you for having me yeah, up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've, we've kind of, we kind of, we kind of went into music and stayed in music. I wasn't yeah. expecting to stay in music no, the but, entire night, but it's not even, that's not even like bad. Like, no, this is what we were saying before about music. It's, oh. it's so vital. It's like, it's, it's such a life energy, a life force, like a lifeblood, like in that sense. Dude, you, you listen most days. When you're, if you don't listen to music a whole day, you're mostly hearing car noises. You're hearing <laughs> the birds, depending, dogs depending barking, on any sort of machinery. You hear the AC yeah. running. It's just noise. When you hear a, right. a beat and that, and then just the sound of the guitar and the drum, or even just the bass, or even the the saxophone. And oh my god, man! I'm just like imagining that coming coming in in a in a situation where you're it's pretty bland as far as noise goes and you get mm -hmm. that it's that it's a different but i feel like in nature in nature the natural music of the world is better than the oh. the, the city yeah, yeah yeah for sure i mean think, think about like i will go out to work sometimes and i'll spend like an hour out like 20 minutes away from the ramp from the main road even like you're two minutes from the main road, it's silent. There's, it's that kind of silence though, and the wind kind of blowing, and you hear mm. the rustling of the of the um, leaves, of the leaves, and just the wood, trees and, and stuff, like trees and stuff, and just everything kind of bending to the wind. Really, <laughs> is really what it is. <laughs> it's that that somehow can still feel more, better than than being in a city, even though people want to be in a city so much. And it's always, right. I think that that's right, right. I will always take about being in the city sound, but sometimes mm. the city hits right. You like come in, right. it's like, look at all these people. And that, that, that coming I mean, in. That's, that's another thing. That's another thing that's, it's that reminds just me another, of the fact that it's, it's forever changed. That, yeah. Well, that's what was great about the world is that there's so many different places. So there's so many different feelings that you can get from different places right. that's why we want to see the world that's a big thing like yeah. in life if i want to do anything really i want to see the world i want to see different lifestyles and mm. and also but just like ways of existence and there's so much that life changes if you're just in a different location in the world and right and i want to see it before we start getting so interconnected that it's almost all the same because culture right culture is going to shift culture 
the farther you go back, I guess we're not, we haven't been that long in history and history hasn't been recorded for that long. But if you go for like another thousand years, we're going to be farther, more and more time-wise separated from our past, from all the history. And I don't think in that time we'll, I mean, first off, I don't, I don't actually don't know. We might still be talking about that stuff and accessing it to be still ruling our lives. But I think we'll be more mm-hmm. drawn from it. Time will have passed. There's more things to happen. I think right. in a lifetime, I don't know. Because generationally, we're pretty close still. Yeah. <laughs> but I believe, I don't know, in a, in a generation or two, maybe outside of our lifetime, honestly, I think it's, it's, it will be, it, I think yeah. the world culture, the more connected we get, the more it'll change. And we won't have mm. we'll have universal holidays more than we'll have. It's not like that's a big jump forward. I don't see that happening for a, a long, long time, really. But it's just, a, I mean, speculation, honestly. And I, so yeah. that's why a big part of being in this world, we're so many people in this world, might as well see yeah. what we're like. Yeah. And that's something yeah. that I've been thinking about a lot. And I was thinking of like going, when going abroad, if I get to go, I don't know. But if I do, man, oh man, do I want to travel some there? Because that accessing that European culture, and then I can actually, if I really feel like pushing it, I could access more places because we're just on the other side of the world. And that other side mm-hmm. is a whole other, whole other game plan. Just even mm. the most Western countries, there's still a different lifestyle there. There's still a way of right. being. There's even accents that are different and the conversation right. is different. And the, the, it's just all different. And I, I hope... I hope to see it before. I don't think it'll yeah. happen in our lifetime, but I just think I hope I hope to see it as soon as possible. I really just over the world. Oh, yeah. But that's um. Oh yeah, but that I, I, I mean, but that's another thing about the times right now is the. I mean, I think COVID in general and mass quarantine and all this has delayed a bit of that shift to one mass culture and globalization leading to a streamlining of culture Mm -hmm. and i think that's a good thing because it gives all of us more time to truly consider that ours is not the one and yeah it's not just the alone and not the only yeah and gives us more time to realize and see and and I think bring to life other cultures. Yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure. I think that was a big thing people tried to do was be online and so be accessing more parts of the internet that just weren't. And because they're they're just in different countries, so they're not going to be big in the US, whatever. You know, it's just like different yeah. accessing different parts of the world in that interconnected sense. Like you said, it yeah. brought out a lot of culture outside of outside of um just the US and just the uh, concept that just because like we're pretty much the most successful to do it in every sense. We've basically covered the world when we do things because it seems that everyone knows that doesn't mean that it's the only one just because it reaches mm. different places, just because you see a Lakers Jersey in every single part of the world. So just because you can mm. see any, like, what was the other thing? There's so many t- different jerseys and hats. You'll see different, different parts of the world solely because it looks good, but it, it's got into the culture. People know about Kobe Bryant. Mm. People know about Steph Curry nowadays. People know about LeBron James. Do you hear LeBron mm. James? And like everything you talk about in the U.S. when you leave the, I mean, not actually, but if you talk about American sports, you know, that's a big thing. But, right. but because we've been thinking at least that the American way is the, like the biggest way, so it must be the only way. We're like, hold on, reel it back. We have time to ourselves now. Let's look up some stuff. And then you just, I mean, I think it's like, um, I don't know, it's eye-opening. It's pretty cool. Yeah. We realize, we've been given the time to realize there's more for us to find and, and yeah. to actualize. There's other ways of, other, uh, not other ways of, but other, just other things out there that like may, may I don't know, surprise you, really. <laughs> Well, yeah. just because it's different i mean but yeah all right g all right man. thank you for having me on bro this this yeah. this was fun I'm, yeah. I'm i'm gonna be i have to be at least like twice a week 
Oh, absolutely. At least. I mean, we got to make this. At least. There's got to be. We have ways to go. I like this. I like the where this started. It's a good start. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to get more people on. We could definitely do it too. Like some days we'll have, you know, you or someone who's with you or someone we can call someone else, have them on with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think if you can get like, you don't, we don't have to keep it scheduled, but we'll do like what, twice a week, maybe if you want. Yeah. Um, but that, that's for, that's for another time. But uh, right. thanks that's for coming on, man. Thanks for, uh, right. yeah, take it easy. Hold on.